So our goal here today is to talk about two, uh, two things. One is we'll discuss the development philosophy behind Iron Speed Designer and how you can develop great applications. And the second thing that we will focus on is on the basics of code customization. How do you do it? What are the things to look for? Where are the different controls? What is the page life cycle? Uh, and so on. So let's get started uh, with, with all of that information. Uh, in terms of our philosophy, uh, the key thing to remember is that when you use a product like Microsoft Visual Studio, uh, which is a great product, uh, when you are, uh, but when you're using Microsoft Visual Studio, you're operating typically at one control at a time. Like you can drag and drop a text box and put it and then, you know, write some code behind for that. Or at one line at a time, obviously, when you type in, you know, dim uh, x as string or, you know, uh, and, and so on. Uh, however, with Iron Speed Designer, our goal is to get you closer to the finish line. So rather than running a marathon, how about running the last mile or two of that marathon? Uh, and we do that by giving you an ability to operate at a different level of granularity. The level of granularity that we give you at is a page or a panel at a time. Certainly, you can go back and code at one control or one line at a time, but the primary uh, way to design and develop applications is to one page or one panel at a time. At all points, in, in at all times, you will have 100% of the source code for the application, including base classes. And just to make something clear, there are no server licensing fees. We only charge based on the developer uh, license, effectively. And the code can be modified either in Iron Speed Designer or in Microsoft uh, Visual Studio. Uh, so you can do it either way. In terms of the philosophy itself, what we talk about is that we have a way for you to quickly generate an entire application, uh, and that is through an application wizard, and that where you can simply say, here are my tables, and give me, here are the pages that I want, boom, create it. And that's what the application wizard allows you to do it. But obviously, uh, the starting point, our expectation is that are not necessarily all of the pages exactly how you want it, so you obviously want to fine-tune it. Well, we have different levels of fine-tuning at different granularity levels. And that is effectively done at either uh, what we call a panel wizard. They are the table panel wizard or the Rex panel wizard, which you can access by pressing the configure button. Uh, or you can go on and change the properties of an individual control, like the component properties, for example. And if that is not sufficient for you, you can certainly go ahead and customize uh, at either the layout page level or at uh, using HTML uh, or ASPX control, or at the code using either Visual Basic.net or C Sharp. So you obviously have the ultimate flexibility by changing things that at both the pages, uh, ASPX level, as well as the, the code level. Uh, just to be careful, though, that there is a certain mechanism or a certain technique that you can use in order to make these changes so that your, your changes are preserved. One other thing to keep in mind is that we uh, have spent a lot of time and effort in order to make sure that the changes that you can make are preserved for you despite external changes. So for example, your database schema may change. We, in fact, expect your database schema to change, and in which case, we offer you a mechanism in order to synchronize your uh, database schema You know, whenever you've added a new table or deleted a table, added a new field, changed the size of the field, deleted a field. All of those are possible. We automatically uh, help recognize those things when you synchronize or scan your table uh, database for changes, and we incorporate those changes uh, in your schema in the application. We rely on the schema for a lot of information, as you can imagine. We rely on uh, on the data types. We rely on the field names. We rely on the sizes of uh, the various fields and so on in order to make a great uh, looking application uh, for you. And certainly, you can customize the page as well as customize the code. And if you do it in the proper way, your uh, changes will be preserved. And you can kind of do this repeatedly multiple times, because we our belief is that an application is never really done. Uh, you just need to launch something, and then users will ask for more things, and then you, you enhance that and move forward with that. As I mentioned to you earlier, we work with both. Uh, you can make those uh, code changes both in Iron Speed Designer or in Visual Studio. And all you need to do is click the Visual Studio button in order to open that up. 
and be able to then uh, get all the advantages of Visual Studio, including uh, you know in full IntelliSense, including the debugger, and you know call stack, and and so on. These kind of facilities will probably never be added in Iron Speed Designer because uh, Visual Studio is already a great product that does uh, very well in those areas. We believe our product is complementary to Visual Studio and not a replacement for Visual Studio. So what we would rather do is focus on things that Visual Studio does not provide rather than repeating and rebuilding those features that Visual Studio already provides. So that's the reason why we have focused on making it into a complementary product rather than a replacement or so. A lot of times I myself, when I'm developing applications in Iron Speed Designer, I'll jump to Visual Studio to make my code customizations uh, because Visual Studio has a lot of additional features that make, make it very easy for me to enhance and add, uh, add, uh, add code. Now, when you're making code modifications, uh, what I want to do is review with you how you can make those code modifications and make sure that those are preserved for you as you move forward. So in terms of making those uh, modifications, keep in mind that whenever we generate uh, a code file, either in Visual Basic, .NET, or in C Sharp, we uh, generate two sections for you. One is called section one, and another is called section two. The generated code will always be in section two. Section one will be generated once and will never be overwritten. As long as you make your changes in section one, your changes will be preserved, and you will always be able to override and do anything uh, that you have been able, you will be do, able to do in section two. So there is not no loss of functionality. Uh, in terms of the type of changes that you can make in uh, section section one. So as long as you stick to that, your changes will always be preserved. Um, the things that I'm going to show you now are all available to you in the code customization tutorial of the online help. All you have to go to is www.ironspeed.com slash kb or knowledge base. Type tutorial and the first link will take you to the code customization tutorial. And I recommend you 10, 15 minutes of reading that will save you countless hours uh, because it will give you an overview of what exactly Iron Speed Designer generates in terms of symbols, in terms of classes, in terms of code, so that when you go make those modifications that you want to make, you'll be making them at the right uh, place. So I'll cover a few of these things, but I'll go through at a higher level. But I recommend you read this uh, after uh, watching this presentation. When we generate the code, we generate a number of controls and a number of classes. So let's take a sample page. In this particular case, we're going to look at an add customers page. We call it an add page or an edit page would work very similar to this. In the case of this page, we have what's called a record control. A record meaning a customer record that you're adding, as opposed to a table control where you're displaying or editing uh, data in a tabular format, effectively in rows. Uh, that are available on the table. In this particular case, we're dealing with a record. So what we do is we generate two classes designated in yellow over here. One is called the page class, and this is the code behind class if you're familiar with .NET development. And the other is a class called the record control class. Uh, and these two classes basically allow you to customize very easily uh, the underlying code that we generate. So if you look at a visual representation of this thing, uh, you will see that the Add Customers page corresponds to the page here, while the Customers Record Control corresponds to the record control that is displayed over here. In addition to that, we will dis uh, generate a number of different controls, like, for example, the header, the footer, and the menu, as well as a variety of controls, like maybe for the customer name, we will generate a text box here, uh, and so on. So all of those controls are available to you uh, when you are modify when you want to modify. Our recommendation, whenever you're trying to customize, customize at the lowest level you possibly can, and in this case, the lowest class that you possibly can. And in this particular case, that would be the record control class, not the page class, because you have have direct access to all of the controls and the fields related to that particular record when you're making when you're making the changes. So now let's look at you know what do we generate at each one of these different classes. So let's say, for example, you have something like an add customers page. First and foremost, this customers page does not stand alone. It derives from the .NET uh, page class. So 
it's it's essentially something that uh, inherits from that and inherits all of the functionality that is available in the .NET Pages class. We also have an intermediate class called a base page and actually another one called base application page. These two classes exist because they add some additional functionality at, that is a, available across the board for your entire application. But it also gives you an opportunity to make modifications at, across the entire application by changing it at the base page or the base application page level uh, when you need to. In terms of the ad customer space, we generate a whole bunch of methods like load data, like the click handlers for each one of the buttons that are generated, and so on. And there are certain methods that are called quote unquote safe methods. Those are things that you are able to change and things that are going to be overwritten when uh, the page is regenerated, where we recommend you do not change that. So anything which is with an underscore base would be a generated uh, one, and we recommend that you do not change any of the things uh, with that uh, suffix there. However, you can change anything that is available to you without that suffix, like load data, like save button, click, and, and so on. Just like the page class, we also generate a record control class. And this record control class uh, also derives from a base class uh, that is available to you. And the base class is called like a base a record control class. And there are two classes that are generated for you. One is going to be a customer's record control class, and the other is called to a, going to be called a base customer's record control class. The base customer's record control class is the generated class. It will contain a whole bunch of uh, code that we generate based on the selections that you have made on the, the panel visit. And the customer's record control class will start out as an empty class. However, you can override any of the methods that are generated in the base class uh, at this level so that you can effectively you know, change the underlying JET code that we have generated. You can probably sometimes simply copy and paste the code from the base section over to into this section and then you know, make the, the two or three line changes that you need to make in order to customize it for your, uh, your purpose. Just like a record control, the table control, meaning that when you see on the lower left-hand side over here like a show customer's table being displayed, and there is a information being displayed in a tabular format, and you have buttons that allow you to add new and, and so on and so forth. And if you notice that uh, we generate three classes here, shown in yellow, uh, but also shown in red over here uh, at this level as well, and you will notice that one for the page, called the show customer's table page, one for the table control, and one for the each row, uh, which is called customer stable control row in this particular example. Again, my suggestion when you want to make code customization, do it at the lowest possible class level as possible uh, as as you can. And in this case, the recommendation would be to do it at the row level, the customer stable control row in this particular example. Uh, that will give you a lot more flexibility. Certainly, if you want to do something at the buttons, for example, or the filters for the table, the lowest class in that case will be the table control class, and that's where you would make uh, your, your changes. One of the important concepts in any .NET application, and this is not specific to Iron Speed Designer generated applications, is what's called the page life cycle of a .NET application. When you look at a particular page, you will find that the way .NET works is it sends out events, essentially. It sends out different events and uh, basically asks you to handle those events in order to do certain work. Specifically, there are three events that are always sent to every page when it is being displayed. There is the init event, which essentially is sent when uh, the page is being initialized. There's a load event, and it is basically sent to, to tell the, the page that go ahead and load your data from the database or wherever else you need to do and bind it to the user interface controls that you have. And finally, what's called the pre-render uh, event, which is an event that is sent just before uh, the page is actually going to be displayed. So if you have any last minute things that you need to do, you would do typically do them in the pre-render uh, event. So those are the three events that are sent for every page all the time. There's a fourth event, which is essentially an, what would we call an event handler, that is typically done on what's called a postback. Postback is typically when a user takes an action. 
like let's say the user essentially presses the save button, in which case the save button click handler is going to be called. And that click handler, when it is called, uh, that is called an event handler for that particular bus. So those will happen only on pushbacks and will happen at uh, when the user takes a certain action. But otherwise, normally it's the three events that happen every single time they hit the load and the pre-render. And so anything that you need to do, you need to do in those three events. Now what we do is we generate code by taking advantage of these three events. So what I have here is a, uh, a calling hierarchy of a page in different scenarios. And so the first scenario that we show over here is a scenario where you've got a table control when you're displaying data. So you've got tabular data that is being displayed. What do we do? Well, we generate an event, init event handler and a load event handler. And within the load event handler, we essentially make a call to a page load function, and which calls an authorized function. What does the authorized function do? It checks the security settings for the page and says, ah, this user has access, this user does not have access, assuming, assuming you have turned on role-based security. Either if not, authorized doesn't do anything and moves forward, and then it calls the load data. The, the color coding over here is that the yellow highlighted boxes are all the methods at the page class and the, the pink one are the one at the table control class, and the orange or whatever color you want to say that is, is at the row level, basically. So the load data uh, function then eventually will call a load data for a table. So let's say if you have two tables, then there will be both of those two tables will be essentially called, uh, load data for each of those table controls will be called uh, as well. And the job of load data is to first formulate the where clause by calling create where clause. Keep in mind that the where clause is actually composed of three different things. Number one, it's the, 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 the static clause that you as a developer have specified on the panel wizard. Number two is any filtering that the user uh, does on, 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 on that, and that we call the dynamic portion, as well as any searching and sorting that the user has done uh, on, on, on screen, which is also dynamic. So it's the combination of the static and the dynamic, and that is composed in the create where clause. So if you want to do certain code customization to change the where clause, the ideal thing to do is override the create where clause. You don't have to worry about the rest of the, the, the what happens in the rest of the, the, the code. Just focus on create where clause, and that is sufficient in order for you to actually customize your, your, your page. And then so on. And then you know we call the data bind, which essentially um, uh, binds the data from the database to the user interface controller. This calling hierarchy is also, and there are many more details over here, but I'm not going to go through each one of them. Here is another calling hierarchy for a table control when when the user you know changes the filter or changes the sorting or changes the, the searching criteria, what exactly happens? Uh, if a selected index changes, event is fired, it's caught, it then basically uh, marks the data changes as true. And then in the pre-render, we actually then load the data uh, from, from, from the database. So that's how uh, the generated code actually works. And again, I'm not going to go through each step of this calling hierarchy, but it would be sufficient for you to, to, to just get an overview of exactly how this works. And then you can go through uh, on the code customization tutorial and, and, and uh, learn a little bit more about it. There are a couple more calling hierarchies that work very similarly for a record control when you're displaying data. This applies to like an add page, an edit page, or a show record page, for example. And then similarly for the same record control when you are saving data. Again, go back and read the code customization tutorial, and that will give you a lot of information about how exactly uh, this, uh, this, uh, this works. So with that, let me uh, conclude this part of the presentation.